Today on Apple A Day with Apple Motion, I'm going to show you the tricks for using continuous interpolation with keyframes. You'll be able to animate smooth and continuous movements just like what you're seeing here. If you've ever had multiple items that you want to move, like a slideshow for example, but you don't want them to stop dead on screen, you still want some kind of subtle movement. In other words, a continuous movement. So you go ahead and select your keyframes and change the interpolation to continuous. But unfortunately, more often than not, the items tend to reverse direction and, and they bounce back. There's sort of this weird elastic behavior going on. So one solution is to change the interpolation to Bezier and you can make the adjustments to the animation curve until you get it right. Um, that works, but it's a little cumbersome as well. So I'm gonna show you how you can still make continuous interpolation work in your favor. So let's jump in. As you can see, I've got a motion project already open. I'm just going to add some drop zones by going to the Add Object menu and choosing Drop Zone. I'll rename this to Drop Zone 1. And I'm going to do this two more times because I want a total of three drop zones. And there I have Drop Zone 1, 2, and 3. Drop Zone 1 is right where we want it. I'm just going to go to the Inspector to Properties so I can see the position. I'll open Position up as well. So right now Drop Zone 1 is at zero. I'll select Drop Zone 2 and then go over to the Inspector in the Properties tab and change the X position to 2500. That will move it to the right by 2500 pixels. And go to Drop Zone 3 and push that up to 5000. So they should be evenly spaced apart. If I change my view to 25%, you can see Drop Zone 1, 2, and 3 all evenly spaced apart. I'll change my view back to fit in window. Now we're not actually gonna animate these individual drop zones. Instead, we're gonna animate the camera to go from drop zone to drop zone. So I'm gonna go back up to add object and choose camera. So motion will prompt you to switch to 3D and that's fine, that's what we want. So click on that. So now we have a camera and we want to move it from drop zone to drop zone. So with the camera selected and the playhead at the beginning, under the Inspector and Properties, I'm going to add a bunch of keyframes and I'll explain why after I'm done adding them. So the very beginning, I will add a keyframe to the X position and then I'm gonna move ahead in the timeline by two seconds. I'll type in plus 200. And you can see right here, it shows you that I've typed in plus 200. And it's not 200 frames, it's that is gonna get automatically formatted by motion to be two seconds and zero frames. If I just typed in two, it would move the playhead by two frames. Well, that's not what we want. We want two seconds, so plus two. And you could put in the colon or the semicolon like that, but the system is smart enough to separate that automatically. So we will just type in 200, and that puts us to two seconds. I'll add another keyframe to X. Without changing X, we're gonna leave it at zero. I'm gonna move ahead by one second now, plus 100, hit return. Add another keyframe to X, and here we're gonna move this to 2500 to move us over to the next drop zone. I'm gonna move ahead another two seconds, plus 200. Add another keyframe. We're gonna leave it alone at 2500. We're gonna move ahead by one more second, plus 100. Add another keyframe, and I'm gonna move this to 5000, which is the third drop zone. Move ahead by two more seconds, plus 200. Add another keyframe, we'll leave that at 5,000. We're gonna move ahead one more time by one second. Add another keyframe, and we're gonna change this to 7,500, which would be the position of a fourth drop zone if we had it. Okay, so let's go over this. The first keyframe starts the animation, but we don't want to move for two seconds, giving the viewer some time to see the picture. So nothing's happening for two seconds. And then at the two second mark, we're gonna to move to the next drop zone. And again, hold that for two seconds. And then at five seconds, we'll move to the next drop zone, which we will hold for a few seconds. And then of course, move off to the next drop zone if there was one, but in this case, it just goes off screen. Now, if I play this back, so it plays back okay, um, as you can see, the movement is not continuous. 
And you can see, if you look closely at the animation curve, there's some easing in and easing out at the keyframes. So that does help smooth out the animation. But obviously it's not continuous. So let's fix this. We're gonna change the interpolation for all of these keyframes to continuous. So with the camera selected, click down in the keyframe editor. Now, by the way, if you don't see the keyframe editor, you can activate it by clicking on this icon over here on the right. Once you're in the editor, you can enlarge the view by clicking on this icon, which is the Fit Visible Curves in Window. So now I'm gonna press Command-A to select all the points in this curve. And I'm gonna right click on the last one. And under Interpolation, I'm gonna change this from Bezier to Continuous. And now we have a nice, smooth curve all the way through. But it's still not what we want. So let's play it back and see what it did. So the movement is certainly smooth and continuous, but it does this really annoying elastic bounce thing, which is not at all what I wanna see. Uh, before I move on, I just wanna change the Z property of the camera to move the camera back a bit so that the drop zones don't fill the window. So if I play it again, you can see better what's happening. Okay, so how do we fix this bounce? Well, I'm gonna go back in the keyframe editor. If I click anywhere, it will deselect all of the keyframes. And I'm gonna use the arrow keys in the inspector right over here to jump from keyframe to keyframe. So here I'm at the three second mark and you can see that X is at 2500, which is what we had selected. But looking at the curve, you can see that it rises up a little bit before coming back down. That's what's causing the bounce. So it's kind of moving back right about there. So we need to smooth out this curve. So to fix this, I'm gonna move these keyframe points in the curve manually, which won't be precise, but we can put more specific values in later. So if I click on the keyframe at three seconds, and if I hold the shift key down, that's very important, if I hold the shift key down, it will prevent moving that keyframe from left or right. Shift will constrain the mouse movement to be just up and down. I'm just gonna move my playhead away from this for a second. And so if I, again, click on this, hold the shift key. So I'm gonna move it down until it looks like that curve is not going higher than the point at five seconds. So it's still going up slightly, but I'll move over to the next keyframe at five seconds, do the same thing, except instead of moving it down, I'm gonna move it up. So something like that. Now it looks like that line doesn't reverse direction. It's still going either straight or up. So let's play this back to see if we did that right. So that's pretty good. It's still continuous movement. It's not reversing itself or bouncing back. And the slide stays on screen long enough for the viewer to enjoy it. So now that we've adjusted that roughly, let's go in and put some precise values in here. So here, We'll type in, well, it's got 2299, we'll make that 2300. And then at the next keyframe, which is at five seconds, I'm gonna make that 2800 instead of 2900 because I think it moved a little bit too far at the end. I'm gonna play this back to make sure we didn't break it or make it worse. That's a little bit better. It's stopping a little bit longer before it continues on. Whereas when this value was closer to 2900, it moved a little bit too fast. So there we go. So for that first keyframe for the slide, we changed the value from 2500 to 2300, which is 200 pixels less. And for the second one, we went up 300 pixels from 2500 to 2800. So basically we're gonna offset the other keyframes by minus 200 and then plus 300. So let's do that right now. Go to the next keyframe at six seconds. That's 5000, so we're gonna change that to 4,800 minus 200 and go to the next keyframe and we're going to add 300 to 5,300 and the next keyframe 7,500 minus 200 we'll make it 7,300 and at the beginning we're going to do the same thing so that should be minus 200 at the very beginning and the next keyframe will be 300. So now if I play this back we have continuous movement, successfully done and applied to all of the slides in the slideshow. And of course, you can adjust the timing to have this move at any speed you like. And also you don't have to move in one straight line like I did, you can move anywhere you want in this virtual area. So using interpolation set to continuous now suddenly becomes useful. 
It's just a matter of tweaking the parameter values to control the curve to suppress this elastic effect. Well, that's it for today. I hope this was helpful. Thanks so much for watching. Please like and subscribe. I'm John Martins, and I'll see you in the next episode of Apple A Day.